Hey there, APKL class. We're going to continue on with uh, our uh, related rates notes. So I left off on example four, and this one is going to talk about a right cylinder it has a height of 10 feet and a radius of 8 feet. So we'll put that right in the given right away. So we have H equals 10, R equals 8. And the dimensions are changing. So it says the radius is growing at 2 feet per minute. So that's going to be our dr dt. dr dt is growing, so positive 2. And I'm not going to put the labels on it right now. We'll just put the numbers in there for now. And then the height is shrinking at 3 feet per minute. So we've got a rate of change dh dt of the height is a negative 3. So that's all of our given information right now. And what we're trying to find is the rate of change of the volume. So what we want to find is d v dt. Okay, so what we need is an equation that ties these variables together, and we are talking about the volume of a right cylinder. So that equation is v equals pi r squared h, and that is a commonly used formula here, so you really should know that one. Okay, and because we do want the dv dt, that means we're going to take the derivative of, of this equation, and so that's, I'm going to maybe come back up here and work. So derivative of volume with respect to time. And remember, pi is a constant. So what we have is a constant times, um, then we have a product of two variables here. So there will be a product rule involved there. I'm just going to pull that pi out, and then I'm just going to think of the product of r squared and h. So um, product rule, it's going to be 2r, and then I would have dr D A or D R D T, so that's the derivative of the first times the second, which would be times the h, and then plus the first, which would be r squared, times the derivative of the second, which would be d h d t for that. Okay, so there's my there's my derivative of that function, and I could simplify it and distribute if I want, but at the same time I could just put the numbers in that I that I want to plug in right now too. So to find, um, to find the rate of change of the volume, we just need to plug in our, our r, dr dt, h, and dh dt. And we should be able to come up with that. So we've got dv dt and pi times, so the r we had up there was 8. So I've got 2 times 8 times dr dt, which was 2. 2 again, and then times h, which was 10. We're multiplying those four numbers, and then plus r squared, which is going to be 8 squared, times dh dt, which is times negative 3. Okay, and then all of that is going to be times pi. So if I multiply this out, it looks like I'll have, what, 1632 times 10, 320. So I'll have 320 for that. And this is going to be a negative, negative 60, or 64 times negative 3, which I believe is negative 192, so it'll be, it'll be minus 192, and then that would be times pi. So that's going to give me, uh, give me 128 pi, 128 pi, and then this is going to be in cubic feet per minute, so it's a volume, so that's cubic feet per minute. Okay, so again, we just wrote down our given information, our rates of change that we had for the radius and for the height. Uh, we had a given height and a given radius, um, and then we're looking for the rate of change of the volume. So we had to use our geometry formula for volume of a cylinder, take the derivative, which involved the product rule, and then plug in all of our given information. All right, part B, it says the radius is decreasing at 4 feet per minute and the height is increasing. Find the rate of change of the surface area this time. Okay, so surface area, that may be a formula that maybe you aren't thinking of or can't think of maybe right off the top of your head, but you know, it's pretty easy to, to break that one down because what surface area of a, of a cylinder is really, it's two circles, right? It's the top and the bottom. And then if you were to or cylinder up here. I didn't really draw a picture of it, but you know, if you were to take apart a cylinder or like a pop, a pop can or something like that, you know, you've got two circles, and then the the 
middle part of the lateral part of it, really, if you would slice that open and unroll it, it's just going to be a rectangle, right? So what do we have? Well, the two circles, pi r squared, so there's going to be two of those, so that's 2 pi r squared. And then plus the area of this lateral piece, um, you know, that's just going to be a height here, and then times, in, you know, that height is, would be like, you know, what I have right here. And then the, really the width of it is, again, it's going to be the same as the circumference of the circles on the top and the bottom. So circumference of a circle is 2 pi r, and then the height is, you know, just the height, so this would be 2 pi r h. So that's our formula for surface area. So I'm just going to say S for that, for surface area. Okay, so what are we given here? We know that the radius, the dr dt, is decreasing at 4 feet per minute. So I'll put a negative 4 there. The dh dt is increasing at 2 feet per minute. We still have the same radius and height as before that we started with, which were 8 for radius, and height was 10. So we've still got those same numbers. Now this time we're going to try to find the, the rate of change of the surface area. So that's ds dt. Okay, so we're going to take this, you know, this equation that I wrote here, and we are going to take the derivative of that, right? Okay, so we'll have d s dt, and for the first term here, remember two pi, that's a constant. So we really only have the one variable here. We only need to apply the um, the power rule on that. So that's going to become four pi r, four. R. So I'm, I'm, I'm doing the power rule, multiplying the 2 down there, right? And then times dr dt, dr dt. And then for the second piece of this, there is a product rule involved in that one. So I'm just going to factor out the 2 pi. So I'll put 2 pi out here. And then I've got the product of r and h, right? So derivative of r dr dt times h plus, that's the derivative of the first times the second, and then plus the first times the derivative of the second, which would be r times dh dt. Okay, so there's my derivative right there. And so I, now I can plug in the numbers that I have been given. So the derivative, the rate of change of the surface area with respect to time. So ds dt is going to equal 4 pi times radius of 8 times rate of change of radius, which is negative 4, plus 2 pi times dr dt, which again is negative 4, times height, which is 10, plus uh, r, which is 8, times dh dt, which is 2, right there. Okay, and so right here I'm going to have 4 pi times 8, times negative 4, which should come out to um, negative 128 pi for that part, and 2 pi times, and here I'm going to have negative 40 plus 16, which is going to be um, of negative, what, 24 there, times 2 pi, let's see, or so... That's going to be 2 pi times, it should be negative 24. So that's going to be negative 128 pi minus 48 pi, which is negative 176. All right, so we get negative 176 pi, and the units on that, since it's a rate of change of surface area, that would be square feet, square feet per, per minute, okay? So again, procedure is the same. We just got to, sometimes working with the numbers, it gets a little tedious there, but um, our equation for surface area, we had to come up with that. We had to take the derivative of that and then just start plugging in the values that we were given and simplify it, okay? All right, so um, this next table is just, 
some tips for solving these related rates problems. Um, I don't know that I'll read all this to you, but you know, just like any other word problem, making a sketch is, is often helpful. Labeling sides, writing down all your given information, um, that's important. Um, find an equation that ties the variables together, usually a geometry equation. Um, it says you may now plug in constants, so if there's things that don't change, you can plug those in. However, if there are things that are changing, you don't plug in any numbers in for those until after you take the derivative. So that's what step four is saying. That's important. And you always do, you always do your um, derivative with respect to time. So you're um, implicitly differentiating with respect to t. And that's why, you know, as we did all of these, there was always a dr dt, dh dt. You know, we're doing it with respect to time. So every term contains a d something dt, okay? And then in the end, make sure you're labeling your with correct units. So if it's a rate of change of volume, it's a cubic feet or cubic meters per, you know, t unit of time. So make sure you're you're getting the correct units labeled on there. Okay, example five. Okay, so this one is referring to an oil tanker that has sprung a leak. It looks like so. Let me see. let's get situated here. Okay, so an oil tanker spills um, oil that spreads in a circular pattern, so we're working with a circle whose radius increases at a rate of 50 feet per minute. How fast are both the circumference and the area of the spill increasing when the radius of the spill is, and then we have two parts here, um, 20 feet and then 50 feet. Okay, so we're working with basically two separate formulas here. We're going to work with um, a circumference formula, so we're going to have C equals, yeah, we'll do it in terms of radius, right? So circumference is equal to 2 pi r, right? So c equals 2 pi r, so that'll be one formula we're working with. And then our area formula, a would equal um, pi r squared. And we know we need to do the derivatives of each of these, so I'm going to write those out. So our dc dt, so the rate of change of the circumference, would just be 2 pi and then dr dt because you know we've just got this 2 pi is our constant that's our coefficient and when we do the derivative you know that's just a power of one so that disappears but we have times dr dt and then for the rate of change of the area so da dt now this one um, again it's just pi r squared so for that one we're going to have 2 pi r dr dt using the power rule for that one okay so what do we have um, we're given some information here it looks like our dr dt was given up here and that's increasing at a rate of 50 feet per minute so that is 50 feet per minute and so we have that to plug in for our dr dt in both of them now for part a we want to know um, when the radius is 20 and for part B it's when the radius is 50 so we have kind of two parts to do so um, for part A I'll just label that here for part A um, DC DT would equal um, 2 pi and then times our, our radius uh, DR rate of change of radius of 50 so times 50 and so we would get 100 Pi. Now that's just going to be feet per minute because it's just it's a linear unit circumference. So that's 100 pi feet per minute. Okay, and then for the rate of change of the area, dA dt. Okay, and then you could see in this one the 20 feet actually didn't even matter because when we did the derivative of circumference, the r kind of disappeared and all we had was 2 pi dr dt. So all we needed was the rate of change of the radius. We didn't need the r. So that came out to 100 pi feet per minute. Okay, and then the dA dt, um, you've got 2 pi, and then the radius is in play here. We need that because there's still an r, so the r is 20 on part a. And then the dr dt is 50. So that's going to be 20 times 50, which is 1,000 times 2 pi, which should be then 2,000 pi. 2,000 pi, and that would be square feet now, 
right? Square feet per minute for that one, okay? All right, and then for part B, for part B, I'm kind of running out of room here. For part B, so um, this time it's when R is 50 feet. However, we noticed with the rate of change of circumference, the, the R wasn't even in there anymore, right? So we're going to get the exact same answer, I do believe, for rate of change of circumference, regardless of, you know, where the, you know, what the radius size is, because it's, it's going to continue to increase at just a constant rate. So for, for DC, DT, the rate of change of circumference, that's going to be the exact same thing as what we got for A. So that's just going to be 100 pi feet per minute. And for DA, DT, okay, now this one, the the radius will affect this because that's still in our rate of change formula for area, right? It's 2 pi r dr dt, so that will matter. So I'll have 2 pi, this time times 50 for radius, and then also times 50 again, right? Because that's what my dr dt is 50. Radius, in this case, 50 for r, dr dt is also 50. So 50 times 50 times 2, um, what do we get for that? So we have 50 times 50 is 2,500 times 2 is 5,000. So we're going to have 5,000 pi, and that's going to be square feet per minute. Okay, so we do get a different answer for that one. Okay, so there we go. That's a, um, a circular problem, probably a fairly common type that you would see there. Okay, another very common one. I know that there's one of these on the test for sure. A falling ladder problem. This is a one that they like to talk about. The AP exam likes these ones too. Okay, so it's just a right triangle problem, right? So we've got a 13-foot ladder leaning against the wall. Okay, so 13-foot ladder, that's a constant value because the height of the ladder is not going to change, or the length of the ladder, I guess we would say, because it's sitting at an angle, right? So we've got that. The things that are going to change because it's being, it's going to be pulled out, you know, it's being like, if this is the wall right here, the vertical wall, and the base of it, the base of the ladder right here is being pulled, pulled out in this direction, then you've got an x here that's changing, so there's going to be a dx dt, and as the, you know, as the x is moving out away from the wall, then your y value is going to be kind of moving downward. So we'll have a rate of change of, I'm just going to say x for this distance and y for the vertical height, okay? All right, so this is a pretty straightforward Pythagorean theorem setup. So we would have x squared plus y squared. Part a. We've got x squared plus y squared equals 13 squared, okay? And so we've got a 13-foot ladder leads against a vertical wall. The lower end is pulled away at a rate of 2 feet per second. Okay, so the, the, the rate of change of the x, that's what we're talking about here, 2 feet per second. So x is actually getting bigger. The distance that the base of the ladder is from the wall is growing at 2 feet per second. So I'm going to call that dx dt. So that's going to be 2, right? And it says how fast is the top of the ladder coming down on the wall? So that's what we're looking for is dy dt, the rate of change of y. Okay, so y is going to be getting smaller, right? The height's going to be getting less, but that's, so we know we should get a negative answer when we solve that. Okay, and the two questions, the instant when, um, for part A, the instant when the top of the ladder, in other words, y is 12, and then for part B, when y is 5, okay? So let's take, um, so we're looking for dy dt, which means we'll have to take the derivative here, and so we'll have 2x dx dt plus 2y dy dt equals, now we have a constant there, that's not changing, so that's just going to, the derivative of the constant is 0, all right? So now let's plug in what we know. So for part a, okay, now they, they're giving us, you know, they're giving us y for part a, they're saying y is 12. Now, in a right triangle, we should be able to figure this out, so if y is 12 and hypotenuse here is 13, I think if your Pythagorean triples, if you know those, x would have to equal 5 there for part A, okay? So x would equal 5, so I'll have 2 times 5, and then dx dt is that 2, that's how fast it's being pulled away, and then I've got 2 times y, now y is 12, and then dy dt is what I'm solving for, 
Okay, so this is 2 times 5 times 2, which is 20, and then at 24 there. So I'll have 24 dy dt equals, and then here this is, this is going to be 20, but I'm going to subtract it over to this side, so that'll be negative 20. And if I divide that out, 20 over negative 20 divided by 24 and simplify it, um, if I divide by 4s, I get 5, negative 5 sixths. So dy dt equals negative 5 sixth feet per second. Okay, so it's, it's just, it's dropping by a little less than a foot per second as the bottom is being pulled out at a rate of 2 feet per second at the time, at the time when um, y is 12. So it's not, the top isn't coming down as fast at that time, okay? But we'll see what happens now. What happens when it gets closer down here when it's only five feet above the ground, okay? And it's still being pulled out at a constant rate of two feet per second being pulled out this way. All right, so in part B, we have the same, we're gonna have the same derivative here. Okay, we had to take the derivative, that's all gonna be the same. But what's gonna be different in part B is that the x and y values, right? Because now the y value here in part B, y equals five for part B. And actually then that means if y is five, in that case, x is now 12. So those values kind of switch. Okay, so x equals 12. Okay, so we'll put those numbers in. So into this same, the same derivative that I just took, because that's not gonna change. I'll have, 2 times x, which is 12, times dx dt, which is 2, plus 2 times y, which is 5, times dy dt, and um, that's what we're going to find, right, times dy dt, and equals 0. Okay, so 2 times 12 times 2 is 48. I'm going to subtract that over to the other side, and 2 times 5 is 10, so I'll have 10 dy dt equals, and then that would be negative 48 over here. And if I divide negative 48 by 10, I would get negative 4.8. So the rate of change of y with respect to time is negative 4.8 feet per second. So in other words, as the top of that ladder is getting closer to the ground, and even though we're pulling the the base out at a constant rate, it starts dropping a lot quicker. So in other words, if you're standing at the top of that ladder and it starts sliding down the wall, it's going to be coming down a lot faster as you get closer to the ground, even if the bottom's coming out at a constant rate. Okay, so that is um, a leaning, a falling ladder example. That's one that I know is on the test and it's a pretty common question. Okay, I know it's getting a little bit long, but I want to do one more with this rotating camera problem. Okay, so it says that a rotating, or a camera is mounted 3,000 feet from the space shuttle launching pad. So it's going to be a real amateur picture of this. Um, but I think what we're going to notice is we just have, you know, it's going to be a vertical and a horizontal relationship giving us a right triangle situation here, which allows us to use, you know, if they're going to talk about angles of elevation, you know, we can use some trig to set that up. So it says the camera's mounted 3,000 feet, and that's not changing. So I'm going to put that in. That's a constant. That's 3,000 feet. Um, we're going to have an angle here of elevation that we're referring to. The camera needs to pivot as the shuttle is launched to keep the shuttle in focus. If the shuttle is rising vertically at 800 feet per second, when it's 4,000 feet high, how fast is the camera to shuttle distance changing? Okay. So I think for this one, I'm just going to I'll say Y for this one again. And my x, I think, is going to be a constant 3,000 here. I'll just go x, y, z. So we'll call that hypotenuse, which is really what they're asking about. The, the camera to shuttle distance, that would be if my camera is here, right? My camera, and then the shuttle is flying up here. Okay, the distance here. So really they're asking about the rate of change of z, right? So if we're doing that, I think, you know, we'd probably want to write a Pythagorean theorem relationship here again. So we'll have... That constant 3,000 squared plus y squared equals z squared. And then I can take the derivative there, which the derivative of the constant is going to go to 0. So I'll have 2y dy dt equals 2z dz dt. Okay. 
and now I can plug in the given information. Let's write that down here. So um, the shuttle's rising vertically at 800 feet per second. So that would be the rate of change of Y, right? So dy dt is a positive 800. That's growing at 800. Okay, um, I know that, what else? And we're looking at when, okay, so when x is 4, that, or let's see here. When it's 4,000 feet high, that's going to be y again. So when y is 4,000, okay, so we've got that. But we also need to know z then. And since x is staying a constant 3,000, 3,000, y is 4,000, Pretty simple Pythagorean triple there. Z has to equal 5,000 at that time, right? Okay, so now I think we have everything that we need to solve for dz, dt, right? So we've got 2 times y, 2 times 4,000, times dy, dt, which is 800. That's the rate of change of, you know, the height and the shuttles moving up at 800 feet per second. And then I've got equals 2 times z, which we calculated to be 5,000. And then dz dt, which we're going to solve for. Okay, so that means we've got, uh, what do we got here? So 2 times 4 times 8 is 64. And how many zeros? We've got 5 zeros there. So we've got 6, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So that's really like 6,400,000 there. And 2 times 5,000, so we got 10,000 dz dt, and I'm going to divide that out, so i got four zeros canceling out four zeros right there, and it looks like that's going to leave me with 640 for my rate of change of the distance between the shuttle and the camera. So dz dt should be 640 feet per second, okay? And one more. Okay, so part B on this one. So consider the same problem. Okay, so we've got the same same kind of setup here. So we've got this same triangle. I think we've got the same distance, 3,000 feet. And so we've got a Y and a Z. I'll put those in there. Um, it says, how fast is the angle of elevation of the camera changing at the moment that the shuttle is 4,000 feet high? Okay. So same, same information, 4,000 for y, and that would make 5,000 for z if we need that. Okay, now theta, okay. So theta is involved here because we want to know the rate of change. We're looking for the rate of change. How fast is the angle of elevation changing? That would be d theta dt. Okay, that's what we're looking for in this case. So we have to write an equation that involves the angle. And the easiest way to do that is um, a trig ratio, okay? Now, we do, we, we want to we wanna use the variables that they have here, okay? So we want to use a, a ratio that involves both of these changing variables, not the constant one, because to get the rate of change of this theta, we need to know some changing variables here. So we want y over z. So y and z, opposite over hypotenuse, that would be the sine ratio, okay? So we're going to use sine of theta is equal to y over z. So that's a relationship that involves our variables that we have. Okay, so now, just as always, we're going to do the derivative so that we can create this d theta dt, rate of change of the angle. So when I do the derivative here, that's going to be cosine of theta d theta dt, right? And then on the right side of the equation, this is a quotient. I'll just do the quotient rule. So low d high, which is going to be z, and then derivative of y, which we're going to go dy dt, dt on that. So z dy dt, so low d high minus high d low, so y and then dz dt, and then all over the square of what's below, so that's going to be all over z squared. Okay, so that's what we have Clement there. Ma and Devin Niemann, please come and, to the office. Okay, Clement so now we Ma want to... And Devin um, Please come to the counseling office. Let's wait for the announcements to be done. Okay. So now I think we can start putting in some information. So we do know, um, we know some numbers here. We know that Z is, it's going to be the same numbers as what we had above. We've got um, Z is 5,000. We've got Y is 4,000. And we, the rate of um, change of the shuttle, the Y, the DY, DT is still that 800. So that's all the same as from up above. Okay. So I've got 
cosine of theta. Okay, here's some other thing. I'm gonna I am gonna label these right now. Okay, so I've got um, I've got y is four thousand, and I've got z is five thousand. Is what we have in question here. The reason I'm labeling those right because also what I need is cosine of theta at these particular um, you know measurement times, and so cosine of this angle. Remember, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. And so 3,000 over 5,000 would represent cosine of theta at this particular time that we're talking about when the shuttle is 4,000 feet high. So I'm going to replace a 3 fifths for that cosine. Hopefully you're seeing that. So cosine of theta would be adjacent over hypotenuse, 3,000 over 5,000 or 3 fifths. Okay, so that's going in there. Um, d theta dt, I'm still going to solve for that. And I'm going to put in these other numbers. So I've got 5,000. For the z, I've got um, 800 here for the dy dt minus, and then y is 4,000, and then dz dt is 640. And we we had found that one from the previous um, up here. Okay, so we needed that we needed to use that since so we're continuing at the same same uh, situation. Okay, and then it's all over z squared, which is all over five thousand squared. So these are going to be some big numbers that you're going to use your calculator for. Um, what we end up with here, I think um, when we simplify all of this, it comes down to like 36 over 625 if it's reduced. And then I've got a three-fifths here that I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal of that times five-thirds. Um, you may have to just do a little bit of calculator work on this, but what you're going to find is Okay, so I'll do it in two steps. So 3 fifths equals d theta dt. And then when I simplify this fraction, it, it simplifies down to 36 over 625. And then if I would multiply by 5 thirds, I end up with, and remember, d theta dt is radians per second. Okay, so it's, you know, it's not degrees, it's radians per second. And so it comes out to 0.0. .0 nine six radians per second and you, you can easily you know I think calculate that just take this fraction 36 over 625 and then multiply it by five-thirds or divide it by 0. 0.6 if you want three-fifths but that's what you get for that one so I think that's all we're gonna do for for these ones and we'll finish the last few examples